Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Kraft Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time, Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Meantime, let me tell you what a friend told me the other day. She said, we tried spreading parquet margarine on our bread for the first time last week, and we were certainly surprised why it's really delicious. Well, I don't know why anyone should be surprised that parquet margarine tastes so good, because parquet margarine is made by Kraft. Yes, and made to be just as good tasting and nutritious as all of Kraft's fine foods. Parquet's flavor is delicate and appetizing, just right for a really satisfying spread for bread. What's more, parquet margarine adds important food values to meals. It's an excellent energy food, one of the best you can serve. And besides, every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. Yes, parquet margarine is both nutritious and delicious, and it's wonderfully economical, too. So why not treat your family to parquet margarine tomorrow? Just ask your food dealer for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, morning, Wally. Hello there. Oh, hello, Judge. Didn't recognize you in the earmuffs. (laughs) You're up bright and early meeting somebody? Yep. I'm meeting a certain someone. Yeah, I figured you were. See, you got some flowers. Just open up here and I'll build a fire in the stove. Come on inside and wait. Wally, I think I hear the flyer. Yep, here she comes. Here she comes. By golly, here she comes. What's the matter, Judge? You're as nervous as a bridegroom. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Wally, you're not far wrong. Between you and me, I got the ring right here in my pocket. Well, I didn't know you was considering taking the plunge, Judge. Who's the lucky lady? You'll see. She'll be getting off here in a minute. And by the way, it hasn't actually been announced yet, so don't say anything, will you? Oh, not me. Especially to any Summerfield people? Oh, not a word. Uh, local girl judge? What's she like? Well, Wally, she's about as big as a minute and the cutest little thing you ever did see. <laughs> Got a telegram from her last night. Yeah? <laughs> yep. <laughs> see? She says, arrive Moore's Junction, 6-2 tomorrow morning. Can't wait to see you. Sign, guess who? Cute, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's a woman always keep you guessing. <laughs> Ever been in love, Wally? Well, yes, now you mention it. <laughs> but here comes 54. I've got to drag up that wagon truck. She's coming. She's coming. <laughs> Getting off to you. Get off the end there, Judge. The porter's putting some bags off. <laughs> that must be her. Leela! Leela! Oh, hello there, Judge. Gildersleeve. Nice of you to meet me, Judge. I see you got my wire. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Judge? Did you find your party, Judge? Yes, Gildersleeve. Well, I hope you two will be very happy together. <laughs> Yes, sir, I certainly appreciate your driving all the way over here to meet me, Horace. And I want to tell you, it's great to be back. I say, it's great to be back. Cat got your tongue? You tricked me, Gildersleeve, and you know it. Why, Judge, how can you say that? There's not an ounce of trickery in my entire nature. (laughs) Listen, we might as well come right out in the open. Leela's arriving sometime today, and I'm serving notice right now that I intend to make her my wife at the earliest opportunity. Well, now, I may have something to say about that, Horace. I'd like to see you try. You will, Judge, you will. That's no reason we can't be friends, is it? Come on, what do you say, Judge? May the best man win. No. (laughs) Thanks for the ride. You're welcome. Sorry you won't come in to breakfast. Certainly I'll come in to breakfast. Why didn't you say so? Why didn't you ask me? Well, come on, then. I'm coming. Wait a minute. What about my bags? Well, what about them? All right, then give them to me. Hiya! All right, come here! Oh, hello there, young fella. Hiya! 
was a trick. Can I get a job, Unc? Yeah, wait a minute. Hey, I have an A.M. Civic. Piggy and I are building a Jeep. Guess what? The cat's been gone three days. Can I, Unc? Can you what? Get a job. One thing at a time, Leroy. Well, oh, the Lord. Why didn't you tell us you were coming? I'd have driven over to get you. Well, I knew the judge would never forgive me if I didn't let him do it. Uh, judge? Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Judge. You'll have breakfast with us, won't you? I should be delighted. <laughs> Good. Come on in, everybody. Bertie, company for breakfast. Mr. Gilsley, my goodness, I'm glad you're back. Things have been happening around here. Oh, have they, Bertie? Yeah, let me take you things. Uh, thank you. Did they feed you down there and whistle Vista, Miss Gilsley? Oh, like a king. I don't know a finer cook than Molly McGee. Hmm. Seems to me you're looking a little piggy. Yes. <laughs> well, she's not in the class with you, of course, Bertie. But uh, who is? <laughs> yes, sir. What would you like for breakfast? We got oatmeal, we got ham and eggs, we got kidneys on toast, we got hot cakes, we got English muffins, we got sausage. That'll be fine. <laughs> Do you think you could scare up an extra prune for Judge Hooker here? <laughs> a cup of hot water? Oh, no, sir. I know what the judge is like. Don't I, Judge? Well, hurry up, Bertie. I've got to get to the office. Hey, come on in and sit down, Judge. You can gnaw on a banana till she gets things ready. <laughs> Perhaps I should explain, my dear, that the, the judge isn't speaking to anyone this morning. He's mad at the world. Oh, no. Marjorie? I hope I may consider myself your guest while I'm here. Of course you may. Thank you. Got up too early. That's what's the matter with him. Ask your uncle who got me up. <laughs> now, Uncle Moore, don't tease the judge. You haven't heard the news. The uh, news? What news? I've got a job. Hey, Uncle, can I get one? Can I get a job? Wait a minute. If, what kind of a job is it, my dear? A war job. I'm going to work in the new arms factory. In a factory? Yes. Well, aren't you pleased? Well, I don't know, my dear. I think I might have been consulted about this. But you weren't here. And everybody's doing it. That's still no reason. Marjorie, reason. I think you're taking a war job is a fine thing. And any man with the slightest spark of patriotism would applaud it. Look here, Hooker. Are you questioning my patriotism? All I say is woman's place is in the home. You will sometimes hear it said, Marjorie, by persons of low intellect... Yes, yes. ...that woman's place is in the home. When you do... Ask them what woman's place is going to be if we don't defend our homes. Listen, Hooker, address your remarks to me. It might be of interest, Marjorie, to ask your simple-minded uncle if he knows what a shortage of manpower there is in this town. Hooker, you can't come into my house, eat my food, and ignore me. You talk to me! <laughs> the facts are there. They are very simple. A child could grasp them, Marjorie. But with your uncle... It may take some explaining. Uh, you old goat. <laughs> it comes down to this. The factory's going to require three times as many workers as we've got. We can't bring them in from outside because we haven't got houses for them. So what's the answer? We've got to man the factory with people living in Summerfield who haven't now got war jobs. And that means mostly women. That's true, I guess. Anyway, I can't think of a finer job for a woman than backing up the men at the front. And that's why I went out and got this job. You're right, Marjorie, and I'm proud of you for doing it. You're proud of her? Who are you to be proud of her? She's my niece. I'm proud of her. But you just said that woman's place... Don't you be putting words in my mouth, Hooker. <laughs> and don't give me any of your talk about woman's place being in the home. In my opinion, it's the duty of every person in this country to go out and get a war job. Man or woman, young or old, black or white. Bertie? Yes, Mr. Gilsey? Uh, how's my breakfast coming? <laughs> Fred Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. I'm sure you mothers and housewives have noticed that when you cook or bake something especially good for your family, it disappears mighty fast. Well, the same thing often happens to a food product that's exceptionally good, and that explains why your food dealer may sometimes be temporarily out of parquet margarine, Kraft's delicious spread for bread. Of course, Kraft is doing everything possible to keep dealers supplied. But these days, so many people prefer parquet margarine that some dealers just can't keep up with the demand. Now, I don't mean to say that you can't get parquet margarine. Likely as not, most of the time you can. But it is wise to watch your dealer's stocks and buy parquet whenever he has a supply. Remember, parquet is an excellent energy food and a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. So it's good advice to always watch for and always ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Oh, 
Anything wrong? Uh, not a thing, Uncle Mort. Just a pleasant, healthy fatigue. Fatigue? Oh, oh, fatigue. My new job is going to be lots of work, but I love it. Yes, that confounded war. Is Mrs. Ransom home yet? How on earth would I know? Well, you might have seen her come in. Well, I'll just make sure. Operator, one, two, oh, oh. <laughs> that woman. Even her phone number is provocative. What's that, my dear? I say even Mrs. Ransom's phone number is cute. Oh. Everything about her is cute. Oh, you think so, huh? <laughs> well. Oh, dear, I guess she's not home yet. Uncle Moy, why all this sudden excitement over whether Mrs. Ransom's home or not? Why, there's no excitement, my dear. Just a neighborly interest. Are you certain? Yes. At least I think it is. Uncle Throckmorton. <laughs> well, well, well. Yes, Marjorie, you've guessed something. What do you think about it? Well, honestly, I suppose I should have seen it coming. My dear, one never knows when love is coming or where it's going. <laughs> Uncle Mort, just how far has this particular love affair gone? I'm going to marry Leela Ransom if Hooker doesn't beat me to it, the old goat. You really mean this? Yes, my dear. While I was away, I realized how much she meant to me. I just can't live without her. Poor Uncle Mort. Yeah, but why do you say that? Don't you think I'll get her? Of course you'll get her. Well, what's the matter with her? Nothing's the matter with her. If she's the one you want, then nothing's the matter with her. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. I think she's a lovely woman. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who's that coming up the street now? Oh, Leroy. Uh, Leroy. <laughs> Are you going to tell him? Uh, I'd like to tell him by mail. <laughs> Just mean, excuse me. Oh, what is it, Bernie? Do you mind if we have supper a half hour early tonight? Well, I suppose it's all right. Uh, uh, what are we having, anyway? Well, it's the kind of a meal you don't want to wait too long for. Uh, what do you mean? Well, it ain't the kind of meal you want to eat a whole lot of. Bertie, what are we having? Stuffed peppers. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bertie, you know my feeling about stuffed peppers. Why are we having them? Well, partly because I couldn't get nothing else, and partly because I have my first aid class tonight. Oh, you too, huh? Well, in that case, I suppose I can't complain. Uh, Bertie, we've got news for you. Who's that, Miss Marjorie? Uh, Uncle Mort's going to get married. What? That's right, Bertie. I'm going to marry Mrs. Ransom. Oh, Mr. Kelsey! <laughs> Bertie! <laughs> Bertie, don't take it like that. Bertie, why are you crying? Hey. What's the matter with her? Yeah, come here, my boy. I have something important to discuss with you. Uh-oh. Gosh, I've been pretty good the last few days. This has nothing to do with your behavior, Leroy. It hasn't, and I can stand anything. Shoot the bunk to me, young. <laughs> this is a serious matter, young man. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there uh, comes a time in every man's life, sooner or later, when he... He... That is, uh... It's one of nature's laws that a man should not want to live alone. Er, he should cleave unto another. Uh, Uncle Mort, have you got mixed up with some dame? <laughs> Leroy, I'm trying to tell you of my approaching marriage. Marriage? Yes, my boy. I'm about to risk the sweetest adventure life offers any man. I'm going to embark on the long, happy voyage that makes two people one. Are you kidding? Leroy! <laughs> Yes, he ain't. Leroy. <laughs> Uncle Lord is going to ask Mrs. Ransom to marry him. Mrs. Ransom? Yes. <laughs> I find that whistle intensely objectionable, young man. Sorry, Uncle. I didn't mean anything by it. Uh, see that you don't. Mrs. Ransom is a sweet, lovely woman, and I intend to make her my very own. Well, she's going to be your very own. What's she doing in Judge Hooker's car? Uh, Look out the window. Uh, Hooker? Where? By George, it's true. You must have found out what train she was coming in on. The dirty sneak. she got a new hat. She has? Yes, remember to tell her. I will. The judge seems to be having trouble carrying all her suitcases. Good. Well, I'm not going to help him. I'll wait till he's gone. Then you go over and give her the business. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the way to describe my proposal. Judge Hooker's going in the house with her. What if she agrees to marry him right now? Oh, you think she might? No, nah, the judge hasn't got a chance against Uncle Morse. Oh, thank you, Leroy. Well, anyway, I'll give Hooker five minutes. And the minute he leaves, I'm going right over and pop the question. Now, Uncle Mort, you can't just tear over there and do it like borrowing an egg. Uh, no? No, you must treat it as something important. Call her up and ask her if you can see her after dinner. 
Then put on your new suit, your best tie, a dash of cologne on your handkerchief. Single! And... You're right, my dear. <laughs> this must be handled like a major campaign. How much time till supper? Half an hour. Why, where are you going? After that dash of cologne. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, PB. PB, I want to get some cologne. Cologne? Cologne, let me see. You want some cologne? Yes. You, uh, you uh, wouldn't want some bay rum? No. No, you want some cologne. Mm, uh, is this for yourself, Mr. Gildersleeve, or for our friend? For myself. Have you got any, or haven't you? No, Mr. Gildersleeve, I haven't. Then what do you care who it's for? Well, I just like to know. Just, uh, <laughs> what have you got that smells nice, Peavy? I want to make an impression on a lady. Uh, any particular lady? Yes, a particular lady, but I'm not saying who. Oh. Oh, it's a little indefinite. Then give me something with an indefinite scent. That's all I'm going to tell you. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Gildersleeve, the holidays have just about cleaned me out. Uh, However, I have one item here that hasn't gone too well. What's that? And it comes in a rather attractive package, too. Yes, but what is it? Well, it's a, a bubble bath. A bubble bath. <laughs> what in the world would I do with a bubble bath? Well, it smells nice. It has a sort of an odor of the pine woods. I don't want to come out of a bath smelling like a moose. <laughs> How does this stuff work? Well, it makes a rather extraordinary amount of lather, Mr. Gildersleeve. I understand that the bubbles fill the average bathtub right up to the rim. PV, I don't have any trouble filling a bathtub. <laughs> Is this stuff good for anything? Well, I don't make any claims for it myself, but some people say it has reducing properties. Are you insinuating that I'm overweight? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm not interested in altering my figure, Peavy. I simply wish to give an illusion. With the proper help, any man can appear youthful and sprightly. No, I wouldn't say that either. <laughs> you haven't anything better to offer than this bubble gum, Peavy. I'd better try somewhere else. Now, just a minute, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well? If you want to make a favorable impression on a lady, why not take her a tasteful gift? A gift? Oh, it's pretty soon after Christmas, but that might be an idea. How about some candy? Mr. Gildersleeve, I have an ounce of candy left in the house. Oh, well, how about a book? Have you got a nice light novel on your shelf? Something uh, Frenchy, perhaps? Uh, no, all our fiction was cleaned out in the Christmas rush. Uh, I have got a useful work on business law, but uh, frankly, it wouldn't make much of a gift. Uh, well, maybe something like a nice cigarette lighter, then. Well, the only lighter I have left is broken, Mr. Gildersleeve. I... Wouldn't want to sell it to you. Oh, for goodness sake, P.V., the gift was your idea. You make a suggestion. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, how about a nice package of bubble bath? No. Who's that? Oh, that's funny. I could swear I heard somebody knock. Drag <laughs> <laughs> <Fred> Martin! <Yeah. laughs> I declare you just about frightened me to death. You silly boy. Come in, won't you? Uh, I brought you some roses, Leela. For me? Why, I think that's the sweetest thing. Uh. Oh, they're lovely roses. What is it about me, I wonder, that makes everybody think of roses? A dozen of them, too. I know. I'll put them in with the ones Judge Hooker brought me, and that'll make three dozen. Yes. <laughs> three? Oh, the old goat's been throwing his money around, eh? <laughs> Come and help me arrange them, sophomore. Well, I'm not very good at arranging flowers, I'm afraid. Oh, gracious, what mine is. I just want you to admire them, that's all. You're the one I admire, Leela. Uh, I think they look pretty here on the piano, don't you? You look prettier. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, I declare if I didn't know better, I'd think you were from the South paying me such pretty compliments and all. Uh, Leela. Uh, tell me, how was your trip? Leela, let's not talk about my trip. Let's talk about you. Oh, goodness, what is there to talk about? I can think of much more fascinating things than mine. Tell me about the new factory. Judge Hooker wrote me... Forget and... the factory and forget Judge Hooker. He was over here this afternoon, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Gracious, if you're going to be jealous of every man who happens to propose to me... What did you tell him, Leela? That, truck, Martin, is entirely between me and the judge. Uh, I'll give you a hint, though. Uh, if, I, if I were engaged to him, I'd be wearing his ring, wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Leela, what would you say if I stole a kiss? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> 
too. Oh, my goodness, look at what I've done. That's all right, Shark Martin. It's just an old lamp that belonged to my great-grandmother, Chesterfield. Well, I'm terribly sorry, Leela. I'm just a clumsy ox. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, I've got you cornered. Well, just because I don't happen to be engaged at the moment, Mr. Gildersleeve, doesn't mean you have the right to take liberties. Well... Play something, Leela. Uh, no, I, I'm not in the mood right now. Oh, please, play something for me. If I sing? Well, what shall I play? I know. Uh, just a little love, a little kiss. Oh, I don't know that very well. I'm afraid I couldn't play it without the music. Well, what do you know? Here's the music. I found it right in my inside pocket. <laughs> Isn't that lucky? Oh, dear, I hope I can play this. And now you send the pages, Throckmorton. All right. Just a little love, a little kiss. Just an hour that holds a world of bliss. Eyes that tremble like me and a little word that sings you love me just a little love a little kiss I would give you all my life for thee just a song. That's the way I feel, Leela. Oh, Strachmorton, I always dreamed that someday it would be like this, and now I'm afraid I've spoiled it. Uh Uh-huh. How could anything spoil it? I've gone and done something. What? Maybe it was reckless of me, but I want you to be the first to know. What have you done? I'm sure I don't know what my poor mother would say if she were alive. It's not at all ladylike. What is it? It just came over me and I had to do it. Leela, what is it? What have you done? Throckmorton, could you still love me if I was operating a drill press? Huh? Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Ken Carpenter speaking to the makers of Kraft Cheese and inviting you to tune in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. You lovers of macaroni and cheese will get a thrill out of the new-fashioned way of making this grand dish with Kraft Dinner. A package of Kraft Dinner contains special macaroni which cooks up fluffy and tender in just seven minutes. And the Kraft Dinner package also contains some Kraft Grated, which supplies the grand cheese flavor. You just boil the Kraft Dinner macaroni for seven minutes, drain it, and stir in the Kraft Grated. Your macaroni and cheese is ready to serve. Now, because Kraft Dinner is so simple to make, so good and so economical, it has become tremendously popular throughout the country. So popular, in fact, that sometime a dealer's supply is exhausted by the end of the week. You can help your dealer and yourself, too, by ordering Kraft Dinner early in the week. Then you'll have it on the pantry shelf, ready for grand macaroni and cheese you cook in seven minutes. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.